Okay, so welcome everybody to this session of Sharpen Your Focus and Stand Out from the Crowd. Um, my name is Nicola Urquhart. I'll introduce myself a bit later on, but thank you so much for joining us um, for, for this session. So it lasts about an hour. Um, what I'm asking is if you could just leave yourself muted um, when the presentation is, is taking place. Um, we will have a time for questions and answers at the end. Um, and obviously when you're asking a question, that's a great time to unmute yourself so that I can hear you. Um, if you have questions that you think of as we're going through the session, then what I'd ask you to do is just pop that in the chat function. Um, and I'd really like you to use the chat function just now. Um, so just say hello to the fellow people that are listening um, into this session. And I'd love if you could just put in the chat where it is that you're dialing in from. So as I said, there will be um, a Q&A at the end. Um, and just also to note that the session is being recorded um, and that's just in case anybody can um, access us at this time. So I want you to enjoy the session. Um, and I really want to say well done for taking this time because in doing things like this, you're already um, thinking about your future employability and sharpening your focus. So thank you very much for joining us um, with this session. So um, as I said, my name is Nicola Arker. I'm a lecturer in careers and employability on the Canterbury campus. Um, and also going to be joined today by the amazing Olivia Colburn, who studied um, marketing um, on the Canterbury campus. And she's going to be talking a little bit about her career journey and um, her future plans and also just what she got out of um, studying um, at, at Canterbury and at Kent. And also the amazing Aaron, He's going to tell you a little bit about his experience of studying at master's level. So looking forward to, to hearing from them. So yeah, sharpen your focus and stand out from the crowd. Just really important at this time um, to be thinking about how to do that. And in this session, we're going to be looking at how Kent Business School prepares you, but also how the wider university prepares you. Um, it's really important that you're not just thinking of, you know, joining Kent Business School, but the University of Kent as a whole. So we're going to look a little bit at that. Um, really important that you get out of this session what you want. You've got a really good time to be um, asking questions either throughout using the chat function or we'll have about 15 to 20 minutes at the end. Um, and if you think of a question later, I will put in my contact details so you can ask me directly um, later on. So, firstly, I want to say that Kent Business School is absolutely known for its academic excellence and you would be being taught by experts in their field. So this list of kinds of what looks like quite random things at the bottom, um, those are actually, a lot of those are marks of quality and especially the um, AACSB and the AMBA. So at the moment, it maybe doesn't mean a lot to you, um, but what these actually do is place us in the top institutions globally for business. Um, so we're currently in about the top 5% of business schools worldwide. Um, and we'll think a little bit more about accreditations um, later on in this session. Okay, so really my role as a lecturer in careers and employability is to help you to prepare to get the job, to get the career that you want. And there's two kinds of um, statistics there. And the one, so the top one is kind of 90, over 90% of our graduates go into work or further study. But the one that we're really proud of is the fact that over 80% of those students go into professional level jobs. So it's not just that they're getting a job, but they're getting a job with a particular level of responsibility, a particular salary, and also um, potential for promotion as well. 
So if that's something that you're maybe thinking after your degree is something that you'd like to do, then that is absolutely um, what I'm helping students to do. Okay. And because we do this, we have graduates working in all of these organisations. And again, one of the things that we're really proud of is just the range and the diversity of, of the, the organisations. Um, the big four, um, as they get called professional services um, companies, so people like PwC and KPMG, EY, for example, but also organisations, say, within, within the media um, or within the, the public sector, um, such as the Bank of England, and also technology as well. You're probably hearing a lot about one of the sectors that is booming at the moment is the technology sector. And we regularly have a lot of students going on to work with people like IBM, for example. So we have a dedicated employability team that are here to support you. Um, that, that's me, um, so Nicola Urker, um, and we also have Gemma, my colleague, who supports students on the Medway campus. But equally, we have a team, um, so we're doing things like advocating with employers on your behalf, um, helping you to find placements, and um, answering any queries um, that, that you have. So, it is a big resource within KBS and our sole focus is on helping you um, to get the career that you want after graduation and also before graduation actually so we will talk a bit about um, the placement um, that you can do as well. So a little bit about the graduate labour market in 2020. So what we see here, I'll be honest, this first bullet point was written pre-COVID-19. What we were expecting was lots of sectors to be increasing the number of graduates that they would be recruiting. And then, as we know, things maybe didn't go quite as expected. Um, and come March time, what we did see is a fall in the number of graduate opportunities um, being advertised. But what I would absolutely say is when we look at the graduate labour market, maybe thinking back to sort of 2008, that, that big recession that happened, um, when the graduate labour market is resilient and when it comes back, it comes back really quite quickly. So what we're looking to do in KBS is really to help you to be ready for that when, um, when the labour market does pick up. Also, many sectors are still recruiting um, and our role is to kind of help you with those applications and really to help you stand out from the crowd. Um, what we also see with work is that lots of new technological innovations um, are happening and taking place. So really one of the things that we pr um, pride ourselves on is helping you to get the skills, the attributes that will help you to stay ahead of the curve in this fast changing business world. Okay, and absolutely many jobs and roles cannot be done just by bots and artificial intelligence. So again, we're helping to support you to develop some of those softer skills and um, which are absolutely needed by employers. And the other thing that we've seen is um, graduate recruitment is moving online. And what we're doing in our employability program is absolutely helping you to be successful with that online recruitment process. So really that's the context against which we're helping to prepare you. So one of the things that we do at Kent, so this was these lists of graduate attributes were developed with over a hundred employers. And they were saying, absolutely, these are what we are looking for in new graduates. So we make sure that throughout all of our sessions that you are helped, that you are gaining these and that you can articulate them. Okay. So just a little bit about how we prepare you. So we have employability modules and workshops at each stage of study. 
So right from first year, when you come in, you would be doing the careers award, we would be helping you to put together a CV, and also really importantly, encouraging you to apply for insight days. Um, if you're doing postgraduate study, we have a module at Medway specifically designed around employability and at Canterbury we do tailored workshops. So I'm really proud of how in KBS it's absolutely built alongside your degree. So we also have partnerships with lots of accrediting bodies and industry organisations. So you'll see down the side there um, logos like ACCA. And again, these might not mean a lot at the moment, but um, what that gives you is exemptions towards professional um, qualifications. So likewise with CMI, for example, these are additional things that through studying at KBS um, you can put on your CV and absolutely they can help you if you decide to go down that professional route and do further training. Okay, so placement year. And this is something that Olivia is going to talk a little bit about um, later on. We are really proud of our placement year. So you can do that as part of your undergraduate um, course. You do it between um, your third year and your final year. Um, and also within a lot of our postgraduate courses, you can also do a placement year. And we will talk a little bit more about that because it's one of the things that I think helps KBS graduates absolutely stand out from the crowd. So what Gemma and I are doing is tracking employment and recruitment trends. Um, and especially with recruitment trends, knowing the types of things that organisations are doing. So for example, um, if they're using virtual reality technology in their recruitment um, process, how can we help you to be ready for that? Um, we have some fantastic alumni. Um, if you look back on my LinkedIn profile, actually, you'll see that we've done quite a few sessions that have used alumni. Um, and literally, we have alumni working all over the world in lots of different sectors. Um, and I would, you know, if there's a company that you're already thinking you're interested in working for, you know, use something like LinkedIn and have a look to see if there's Kent graduates there already. Um, but we bring alumni in a lot um, to support you in your career journey. Um, the link at the bottom is for our employability blog. Again, really good idea to just have a look at that just now. Um, one of the things that you'll see on that is that a lot of organisations are contacting KBS directly with vacancies, with opportunities for example. So do have a look at the employability blog. So Gemma and I will also meet with you on one-to-one -one sessions. So that might be that you want help. Just really kind to think about what you want your future career to be. Or you might be thinking, actually, um, I've heard that it's good for first-year students to go along to Insight Days. I'm going to find out how to sign up for those then that's something that Gemma and I are absolutely available to help you with. We also work really closely with the Central um, University Careers and Employability Service. So one of the things that I really advocate for students to do is not just think about joining KBS, but you're actually joining the University of Kent, which has many additional things that can help you with your employability and we will have a little look at those. Okay, we have lots of employer involvement at Kent Business School um, and what Gemma and I are doing at the moment is putting together the employability programme for next term. So we already have employers such as IBM, um, FDM, um, Enterprise, and maybe these names don't mean a lot at the moment, but these are really big graduate recruiters and they're coming in to do things like practice interviews 
or they might do a kind of network session with you, or they might be talking about what they look for in applications. And maybe even just telling you a little bit about what it's like working for them. And it's really important to realize that they're really nice, but they're not coming in out of the goodness of their heart. And um, they're coming in because they're looking to recruit Kent students. So that, that's great. Um, and the amount of employer involvement is something that we are really proud of. Okay. Again, we regularly have lots of um, employers contacting us. So we advertise vacancies on our blog or they might be contacting us about placement opportunities. So again, we put that onto our Moodle page, um, which is our online um, learning platform. But yeah, I think the fact that employers regularly come back to, to KBS and um, to recruit people, again, is just a sign that, that we're doing the right thing. So that, that's great. Um, and Gemma and I, we would absolutely be encouraging you to apply for um, internships, insight days, placements, work experience, part-time work, for example, on campus. And absolutely, um, we would support you through that process. And one of the things is that the reason we spend so much time and so much kind of in terms of getting employers into curriculum is that what employers tell us is having work experience is so important in terms of your future career and it might be you're thinking oh I, you know I haven't even started yet and already they're thinking about um, applying for graduate programs but I'm sure maybe one of the things Olivia might say is it kind of goes really quickly so that's why we really make it as easy as possible for you guys to get relevant work experience. Okay, um, and as I said, our placement year is one of our flagships. Um, so basically it's an opportunity for you to spend 44 weeks within a work environment these are paid positions, so the average salary is about £23,000. Um, and I think it can just give you such a kind of added bonus um, to your degree, really helping to clarify your career goals, an insight into how an organisation works, what kinds of what it's like doing the role, and also it absolutely at the end increases your earning potential. So what we see is students that do placements go on to receive a higher salary when they graduate. So I would say if you haven't already thought about a placement year, it can be a really worthwhile thing to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pass you over to Olivia Colburn, who did um, BSc Marketing on the Canterbury campus. And she's just going to tell you a little bit about her experience. Hi, um, yeah, as uh, Nicola said, I studied marketing. When I first came to uni, I didn't have any work experience. I didn't even do like Duke of Edinburgh, which people talk about. I didn't have like the extra curriculars. So I was just a normal student, did my A-levels, not much extra. And then I came to Kent and I started engaging with the workshops uh, in year one uh, about building my CV. And I was like, oh, I actually don't have much on here. Uh, so I then um, did a summer of very informal internship. I wasn't paid. It wasn't contract, but it was just helping out my uh, local. It was actually he was a hairdresser, but doing his social media. And I know that doesn't sound very big or massive. It's not. But it then gave me that little bit of experience in marketing. Um, so that was another great thing to add on my CV. Uh, I then went into second year and I was like, okay, I really want this year in industry. I'm going to engage in all the workshops. Um, so I went and they were really helpful because they were talking about finding opportunities and especially in this market, it is hard. And then actually how to write your applications and even how to get through all the online tests and games that the big employers do require you to in the process. 
Um, but one of them was actually a meet and greet where a set of employers came in and they spoke about their opportunities that they had. Um, and I managed from meeting them to actually get an opportunity at one of the firms called Rackspace, who are a cloud company. And they're a massive company, but they're B2B. So obviously I'm not their client. So they're not in my brand space. So I've, I just never heard of them until they came to that workshop. So it's another great example of how KBS are presenting you these opportunities and ones that you may not have even thought of or known of, because I didn't even know I wanted to go into that industry. Um, and so I did my placement year there and that experience, I actually really enjoyed working, um, which sounds a bit odd. Um, so I wanted to continue it. Um, so I applied for a summer internship at Google and I worked there for three months. Um, so I had no break in between second year and literally coming back to freshers week and final year as working straight. But it was just something I really enjoyed. And I'd heard from uh, placement students who'd done it a previous year saying how if you work nine to five it's quite easy to keep that mentality up in third year so I just went straight in and I would get up at nine and go to the library and spend my whole day in the library and then come home and then weekends and everything that was all to myself that it wasn't strict I wouldn't stop myself from doing something but that mentality really helps my work ethic in third year um, I then became a placement ambassador um, working with Nicola at uh, workshops for the second year to just talk about my experience and how I got my placement and everything. And that again is another employability thing that Kent offered me that opportunity. And that was a, that was a paid job. So another thing for my CV. And also it's kind of a refresher for me to learn the application process again, going into my graduate jobs. Um, so I then started the whole recruitment process again for graduates um, because I'd done marketing throughout. So the bits I really enjoyed for my job were more like management um, and campaign management. And I was like, well, those skills are quite versatile and then maybe not just marketing. So I wanted to do a scheme that's broader and rotates through different business areas. So I managed to secure one at Sky, which is two years, um, and it will go through different departments. And because that's my plan, really. My plan is I don't know what my plan is, but I've got something secure that can give me different um, experience of the departments. Um, and then I'll go from there. But it all tracks back to engaging with the career service and taking up the opportunities um, which Kent supplied. So kind of Kent gave me my degree, but it also gave me my kickstart to my career. So yeah, that's my story, really. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking about doing a year in industry, highly highly recommend I've not heard bad things about it from any of my friends and they're all glad that they did it as well okay so do you think if you've got questions for Olivia we can ask them at the end or pop them in the chat um but thank you Olivia and it's great that you've got that opportunity with Sky lined up and um, I think they're really lucky to have you because you're a great um student ambassador so thank you so some of you on the call might be thinking about postgraduate study um, and really postgraduate study, it can differentiate you and give you a crucial competitive um, edge in a crowded job market. Um, and one of the things that we really do when you see some of our lists of postgraduate courses is absolutely these have been designed around industry. So it's actually giving you the knowledge that employers say they are specifically looking for. Um, I'd also say that at the moment, um, it really does demonstrate your commitment to personal growth. But maybe you, um, you know, the temptation might be to think, oh, there's nothing to apply for at the moment. I'm just going to take the summer off or I'm just going to take next year off to see what happens. But actually committing to doing a postgraduate course really does show that kind of personal growth and developing your knowledge is something that you are committed to. Um, and as I said, these are absolutely designed around specific sectors. Um, also, you might be thinking that you want to use it to help you to progress to a higher level qualification. So that might be um, a, a MBA. So that is kind of like a, um, a master's in, in business sort of the highest level. Or maybe even you think you'd quite like to do a doctorate and you're doing your PhD. 
Um, I absolutely promise you that if you come to um, Ken, either as an undergraduate or a postgraduate, we don't talk in these acronyms all the time and you would get to know them quite quickly. But yeah, can help you if you decide that you want to, to progress later on. And a bit like doing a placement helps um, an undergraduate's earning potential. All the research shows that postgraduate study can help you to earn considerably more throughout your working life. So lots of kinds of positive reasons to think about postgraduate study. Um, again, these are that they're not all of our courses, but the ones here are the ones that you can also do a placement year. So this is where we support you to find industry relevant experience. Um, and the ones that have the little star, they have an in company scheme where you can actually go and work as a consultant within an organization. And when I look at that list, you can absolutely see how in the current climate of how are we moving things around and, um, you know, with logistics, thinking of the enormous task in terms of healthcare at the moment, what you can see is that these are absolutely um, in areas that are in demand. Okay, so there's enough from me. What I'm going to do is just pass you over to Aaron, who's going to talk to you a little bit about his experience as a postgraduate student and especially just some of the additional things that he was able to do to enhance his employability whilst being at Kent. Thank you, Nicola. Hello, everyone. My name's Aaron. Um, so as you can see, I studied MSc Management at the University of Kent and I'm still finishing off my postgraduate degree. Um, postgraduate study is, as, as you can expect, slightly different from um, undergraduate study um, as it's a bit of a step up and you do specialise, but it doesn't mean that university life fully changes from your undergraduate um, as um, I actually studied my undergraduate here at Kent too, but underneath a different school. So I had a taster of both sides of things at the Medway campus. And um, whilst I was studying at KBS um, for my postgraduate, um, I carried on what I was doing as my under in my undergraduate time at Kent, which involved um, working several contracts, part-time contracts for the university and student union in marketing, events management, and um, in general, coordinating events across Medway campus in the different venues, as well as volunteering because student union does have um, a lot to offer. And that links in very well with uh, Kent Business School's employability scheme, which they offer, where we collect employability points and we can redeem it against um, placements or work experience and various things, which is really, really useful um, as I've actually experienced um, doing that. And um, there are so many opportunities that Kent do offer through business school and through the University of Kent. Um, and um, just getting into a bit more about how I thought about studying or what made me want to pick a master's at KBS was that um, it started when I was running my, I started my own business venture as a freelance back when I was at secondary school. I had a few paying clients for website design and marketing and social media management and that kind of built up towards the university where the university and student union also wanted to offer me roles. So this got me thinking that I'd like to learn some transferable skills which would be very useful for the business side of things after doing a creative undergraduate course. Um, and that made me think about Kent Business School and their masters. So when I was looking at business management, the modules were actually really, really good and were very interesting. And the lecturers are really, really supportive and they will take that extra time to support you in what you do. Um, and yeah, uh, 
you know, I couldn't recommend uh, postgraduates at Kent Business School more um, because it was very, very useful. Oh, thank you, Erin. And I know that both Aaron and Olivia are happy to ask answer questions at the end and equally they're happy to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. I think LinkedIn is a great tool. So yeah, even think about setting that up now. Okay, so one of the other things that we do, and there is another one of these series that you can sign up for, which is about being an entrepreneur, is the business startup journey. So this is the opportunity to do a 12 week co-curricular program, really to kind of help you think about the skills that can enable you to, yes, set up your own business, but also just have an entrepreneurial outlook. So I'd absolutely recommend signing up to that, um, that the Think About Entrepreneurship, um, and it might be that, that Viv can put a link to that in the chat. So absolutely, as well as joining KBS, um, you are joining or you could potentially join the University of Kent. And this is by no means everything that, um, that you can access, but it's just some of the key ones. So the award-winning Careers and Employability Service on campus. Um, we'll have a little think about the Employability Festival and Careers Fair. So this is when we have over 100 employers that are visiting and again the reason they're doing that is because they want to recruit University of Kent students and graduates. If you're thinking about postgraduate study we also have the Global Skills Award that can help you with research support um, and also a series of workshops. Um, Aaron mentioned the fantastic employability point scheme so this is where you take part in extracurricular activities or additional things you get points and then with those points you can do things like internships or you can have some work experience or it might even be a, a visit to a company or shadow a chief executive officer for example um, and you can put those um, points towards those opportunities um, we also have a fantastic program called Study Plus, so that's where you can learn additional things alongside your degree. So it might be a language or it might be coding and um, it might be confidence, but just really a selection of there of all of the different things um, that, that Kent Business School and the wider university can offer you as well as the student learning and advisory service. So they will help you to do things like essay writing, report writing, for example. Okay, so just there a slide about employability points. So again, these are organisations that have specifically said to Kent, um, we want to support your students. And you can see there's a lot of business related organisations there as well. Okay, so just a little bit about the university's employability, employability festival and employer events. So this takes place throughout the whole year. This year it's running the 12th to 23rd of October. Um, the careers fair, it will be virtual, but what that's giving you is that opportunity to actually meet with employers and talk to them. And first year is a really good time to do that because it just gives you a chance to find out what is it that these companies are looking for um, if you decide to apply for a placement or you decide to apply for a graduate role later. And I'd absolutely recommend just um, the link at the bottom is the Careers and Employability Service website. So go in and have a look at all of the great things that they are doing. Um, and what this slide is kind of saying is, you know, there's a list of like top companies, Times top companies, and at Kent we had four of those top 10 companies, which not um, they don't go to all universities. So the fact that they come to, to Kent and to KBS is recognition of you know everything that we do for accreditations, for example. Okay, so that's enough from me. Um, really want to pass over to you guys and just find out if you've got any questions. Hi Nick. There's some questions within the chat, so let me read them out first. Um, so, question from Noah, uh, is it possible to do a placement year even though he's applied for business management without a placement year? 
Yes, my understanding is that you can you can change the course that you've applied for, but equally, once you start, you can actually put in a change of course form. So this is for undergraduate and you can ask to have a placement year added on. So absolutely, if you haven't applied for that already, it's still something that you can do. Thank you, Nicola. Um, we've got a question for Olivia. Uh, Olivia, how was your internship at Google? Um, my internship was really good, of course. Um, they really did live up to their culture um, of how they treat employees and the projects you get to work on. I will say, though, that I think my placement year was not harder in a sense but like that really instilled the work ethic so when I went I found Google quite enjoyable because I'd already got like the base experience of a company and I wasn't so like it wasn't my first experience so I wasn't in shock but yeah it was really amazing and I know they offer you apply for a business general internship and then they kind of specialize you and you do have a say in that but yes there's loads of opportunities in different business areas there. Brilliant and Aaron do you want to talk about your experience as well? setting up your own business so yeah um setting up my own business was um it was a gradual process obviously it didn't really it didn't happen overnight but um gradually from just getting these clients on board through friends and family um after building up a reputation you suddenly get those friends and families talking about your business through word of mouth and especially if you use the online mediums such as a website social media marketing you can really you know get the word out that you you know you get um kind of almost asked by different people to work for them and that's that's in a way how it all worked at university i started off with you know working for kent hospitality um, through a cafe job and they realized I had done a lot of marketing so they got me to do a bit of marketing there and then corporate communications from Kent um, me up to be the Medway social media officer um, and then GK unions also signed me up and it kind of spread so once you build up that reputation it will get out there to the point that now that through Kent actually this is a huge a good thing about Kent is that they do prepare you very well, especially the careers services, is that um, like you build up that networking skill. And I guess that is the case with coming to university, you build that up to the point where um, when, um, when I was finishing off my master's now, um, I got approached by a contact through my Kent connections who wanted their events transition to online events from live events due to COVID-19. And um, that turned into a contract, which is renewed every month now uh, with them to produce their online events. So Kent does prepare you very well for the future and for the business world. Fantastic. Um, another question from Esther. Um, I am a postgraduate with no work experience, so what can I do? Oh. Just on mute. So one of the things that, that I would say is absolutely sitting down with Gemma or I, because it might be sometimes when we start to talk that you find out that you do have more work experience than you kind of maybe maybe think you do. Um, but there's lots of things even to kind of, you know, just kind of start to that we can support you to get part time work, we can support you to work on applications. There's also things that you can do, for example, um, like virtual internships, for example, one of the organisations I'm going to recommend you look at is Bright Network, you could do some of their online learning, some of their masterclasses, just to kind of show that you're starting to develop that um, commercial awareness, for example. Um, so I think it's a lot about looking at what you've already done, looking at maybe starting to go along to insight days, 
looking to do sort of short pieces of work experience and then absolutely you would start to build on that and a bit like Olivia said about um, you know, looking to do marketing so approaching a hairdresser and saying you know can I kind of help out with that um, what that is showing an employer is you can kind of you have those work related skills but you've also got that kind of um, confidence to, to, to set that up and that's something that we can absolutely support you to do. I don't know, um, Olivia, if you want to say just a little bit more around developing work experience or getting work experience. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think about just what you said, Nicola, it is about taking all the opportunities given as well. So even though, okay, some people have done a year, it's a fact that if you want to continue, don't stop yourself because you think, oh, I've done the allotted year, for example, or I've done the allotted month internship. If you want to continue, then definitely like put yourself forward for as many opportunities as possible. Like nothing's stopping you. Um, so obviously if you don't, you didn't enjoy it, that's absolutely fine. But don't feel like you're restricted to the timeframes given or the work given. Just always offer to help out and learn more if that's what you want to. So yeah, just really go for every opportunity. Yeah, and actually thinking about back to what Aaron said as well, you know, a lot of those opportunities were things that he kind of created, created and made, but there's lots of support to help you to, to get work experience. And then we've got a question from Alina uh, about the Kent Business Startup Programme. Do you do it individually or in group? So I think you sign up individually. There is quite a, a, a group focus. So some of the tasks that you do might require you to, to work as a group. Um, but absolutely, um, I would recommend signing up for the, the, um, the webinar where they're going to, to talk about that. But I know quite a big focus of um, the business startup journey is kind of working in groups because that's the nature of being in business is kind of working with other people and using them to support your business. Do you have the link for that Viv when people can sign up to the um, Rebecca's talk? We'll put that in the chat. Okay good. Um, another question from Brian uh, wondering, do you have connections with civil service? We do. Um, civil service are on campus a lot. Um, so they regularly attend the careers fair. They have also um, come onto campus and done workshops with, with, with students. And um, one of the things about civil service is their recruitment process is kind of really clear and well laid out. So very often they will talk to students about what they're looking for in applications um, and also how their recruitment process works. But um, they are regularly on campus, um, the, the civil service. That, so they tend to come to the careers fair and also are part of employability festival as well. Thank you, Nick. Um, Rodan is saying that he um he's applied for the entrepreneurial workshop and ha um hasn't heard anything back oh rodan we'll we'll get in touch with you um you should have received an email uh a sign up email so we'll get in touch with you um another question okay this is more admin email um questions nick not necessarily for the panel um, and they're all our questions so far. Okay. Does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask a question? No. Hey. Um, hi, I'm Rod or Rodan. I've got a question. Hi, Rodan. Um, I was just wondering, uh, in, in terms of doing the MSc uh, postgraduate course, how demanding is the schedule in terms of being in for lectures or seminars and things like that? 
Okay, so that isn't something that I'm not directly involved with that course, but what we could do is um, is find out the name of the, the academic and then we could ask um, them to contact you. Is that something that would be useful? Um, yes, it would. So would are the master's courses, does, does, does the, uh, what's the word? Does, are, do the schedules differentiate for each course then, like in terms of whether you're in twice a week or in four times a week or things like that? Actually, Aaron, could you maybe, I mean, one of the things just to be aware of is it might be that this academic year coming might be slightly different from, from previous academic years. But Aaron, what's your experience of the kind of um, studying for a master's? Yes, yeah, so uh, the studying uh, timetables can vary. So just taking this year before COVID-19 um, came in, um, the schedules actually were not not too demanding. So for our course, the MSc management course, we found ourselves in on Monday from nine to five, a full day, and then a half day on Tuesday from like nine till one or two in the afternoon. Um, the digital marketing MSc and analytics course, um, which um, I had a lot of friends in, um, they actually were um, in kind of a similar amount, but they I think were in on, if I remember correctly, it was Tuesday and Wednesday of a similar kind of timetable, but I have a feeling that um, it's kind of um, made to work around people who also work um, and also for us to do extra studying on the side as well as work a few part-time jobs um, because I know we had a lot of uh, um, mature students on the MSc management and MSc healthcare management more, um, courses so um, they would, the part-time course this year would slightly differ as in they would only come in on Mondays and um, that would be them for the week. Um, but yeah, it may vary in the future, obviously, due to um, the change in teaching, but that's how it works this year for us. Um, yeah, that, yeah that was, maybe, that was it. Maybe, Thanks. Great. Maybe just put what you're looking to study in the chat um, and we can get somebody to, to contact you. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, question on the chat, Nick. Um, is KBS plans to apply for the Equus? Yeah, so that's something that we're actively doing at the moment. Um, I think they are coming to visit us around about February. Um, and when we get um, Equus, which is a, a, another accreditation, we would be a triple accredited um, business school, which really does help us to stand out from other business schools. So absolutely. Um, that that's something that, that we're applying for and all the indications are that, that we will achieve. So yeah, really interesting question. Any other questions or thoughts or, um, yeah, just it'd be great to hear from you. I must say everybody's been really good and been on mute actually, so um, yeah, um, but if you do want to ask a question, then um, but then do. But equally, if you think, well, actually, I would like to know this, but um, you want to contact me directly or Olivia or Aaron via um, LinkedIn, for example, then that's something that you can do. Um, and what I'm putting in here is just um, our contact details. This is the beautiful, this is on Canterbury campus. Um, Sibson building. So if you want to email me directly with a question, that's my email address there. Um, and equally, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, one of the things, if you look back at some of the things that I've been posting, 
Um, for example, if we run an alumni event, I tend to post about that, or if there's a virtual internship or a work experience opportunity, I often post about that. Um, so it just gives you a sense of the type of thing that we are doing um, to, to support you. But do connect with us, connect with Aaron and Olivia as well. Okay, so just last um, few minutes, if there are any questions. Okay, well, thank you so much for making the time available and being on this call. I'd absolutely say that what you're doing already is sharpening your focus and standing out from the crowd. And we'd absolutely love for you to come and join us at KBS and the wider University of Kent um, so that we can work together and get you the career that, that you want. Okay, so thank you very much. And um, yeah, hope to see um, or hear from you soon. Okay, and thank you very much, Olivia and Aaron for being fantastic um, KBS ambassadors. Okay, thank you.